Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio, hope everyone's well. Um, today I'm going to open a new box of Gallo paints from A Gallo in Italy, handmade paints which they have kindly sent me now, the Signature One set, which is the other half of the 24 sets which make up their um, coloured pans. But um, I already had as a gift from a kind lady these ones here, which is a Signature Two, and uh, beautifully wrapped in handmade paper. It's just lovely. It's very, very nice paints, very beautifully presented. You can't argue with that at all as a presentation. Wonderful gift for anybody who loves painting. Um, anyway, so I haven't done anything with this yet. I haven't even opened it yet to look at. So everything is still in its little um, paper wrappers with their, oh, it's a choking hazard. I will avoid eating it. Yes, I promise. Um, so we've got now um, another yellow and an orange and a few more reds and another green and some more blues all of which I'm going to unwrap and then I'm going to put the rest of the set in here so that the whole 24 is in one place. And then I'm going to paint some, um, some herbs. I'm going to do a kind of relaxed medicinal herb um, sketch, uh, kind of random meditative trip down the herbal pathways. So I'll be back in a second when I've unwrapped all of these. So there we are, that's all 24 of the colours unwrapped now and put into place. And I've filled in the colour swatching card so that I have a, a note of which colours I actually have. And um, I think with the nice thing about this um, selection of colours, to my mind, what immediately comes to mind, is that even if you're not very confident with mixing colours to get the different shades that you're looking for when you're doing a painting, especially a natural um, painting, something with... Um, a floral theme or landscape of um, maybe you know a gentle nature not not something really harsh and and strong in tone but um, with these colors you can pretty much uh, get every color that you might possibly want um, straight from the pan really um, you've got lots of different yellows and um, lots of different blues and uh, enough greens which mixed with the yellows will give you a good range of greens and um, there's plenty of reds. They do have more colours in their range and they did send me this as a, a Valentine's gift, San Valentino, with all of the six different reds that they do on there. These are just uh, uh, colour dots so you can actually use those paints and they probably go quite a long way actually. Um, so when I'm painting something red I might very well turn to that. I've got, I haven't got the vermilion or the scarlet or the Pietro Rossa but I've got the other colours in this set. So there we are. Now all I need to do is find myself some paper. Oh, and I didn't mention the brushes. These are the Tintoretto brushes that come with the sets when you buy them from, from um, Gallo Paints in Italy. They're synthetic um, brushes done in the traditional way with the binding of wire around uh, instead of a ferrule, rather than this other way of doing it, um, which is nice. It's kind of uh, funky and fun and... Uh, doesn't interfere too much with holding the brush because you would never hold it down here anyway because that's um, way too close to get any kind of freedom. So you'll hold it up here um, away from that interference with the metal there. So yeah, they're quite nice. They have a lovely point, as you can see. If I just... Ex uh, there we go. The camera is now focusing on that and this one too also comes to a decent point. When you're testing a brush, if you go to a shop and if they allow you, they should, if it's a good art shop, they should allow you to wet the brush like uh, that, make it nice and wet. And then what you do is you should tap the brush a couple of times and see whether it comes to a point. 
And if it comes to a point, then you know that that's a good brush. Um, if by contrast, for example, I can show you a brush which I have here, which is not necessarily quite as good. I don't know what the name of this is. It's rubbed off. It's from India. And uh, look at the shape of it while it's wet. And I suspect that if I do the tap test with this brush, I'll just move the paints out of the way. Yes. And there's no way that that's going to go to a proper point. So this one, you know, it's probably quite good for covering large areas with because it would give a good wash coverage, um, but it's not going to give you any kind of fine detail because it's never, never going to go to a point. If it was going to go to a point, when you do that, it would. So just a, a tip for testing. I know that a lot of people buy their st um, stuff online now, um, so you wouldn't get a chance to do that, but you can test it when you get it. They can't stop you, can they? Um, right, so now I need a piece of paper, and um, I'm going to use this piece here, which is Love is for Dalis. Um, and I'm going to do a little bit of a meander with a pencil, first of all, um, drawing some herbs and things, and, um, and then I'm going to uh, paint them, I think. So I've got an HB pencil here. Let's see if I can get it sharpened. I have my... Uh, Move that out of the way for a second to sharpen this. My pencil plane. It requires a little bit more um, skill. And you're just using a traditional pencil sharpener, which I don't have, but that should do. That's got a point on it now. Now, for my reference material, I'm going to use uh, this book by Richard Maybe, The Complete New Herbal, which has got lots of quite nice pictures in it of different things. And um, I'm going to start, why not start there? Let's move this out of the way. Um, I'm going to draw some herbs that are often used in medicine. This is calendula, otherwise known as marigold. So we'll put that up there. And the idea of this is I thought it would be nice to just do something not too demanding. So it doesn't matter if it doesn't turn out exactly right. Um, so we'll just start copying, basically drawing. Maybe I'll even put the roots in since it's in this picture. We can put some roots in. I um, had the idea to do this because of um, watching the uh, um, the the dean of the um, Kent, Kent, uh, oh god, university? Uh, no, not university. Cathedral, Canterbury Cathedral. I have to go to Canterbury in England next. Oh, not next week. Two weeks from now because I have to go to the dentist to have a, a checkup, but most importantly, a crown replaced because it has uh, come off, as, as they do. And um, I cannot find a dentist. I live in Brittany in France, and... Um, there's a, a terrible shortage 
of uh, dentists here. As you drive along the main roads, often on the side of the road, there's signs up saying um, general practitioner needed for this village uh, or dentist needed for this village. And uh, yeah, so anyway, there are, I think, three dentists in our nearest town and um, none of them is taking new patients. And although I've lived here 20 years, um, I used to go backwards and forwards to England regularly, so I always had all my dental work done in Canterbury at a dentist that I'd been going to, private dentist. I pay for my own dental work and I would be happy to pay here too, but nobody wants to know me. Um, uh, but then when England decided to leave the EU and then we had the pandemic, I wasn't able to just hop backwards and forwards like I used to because we used to run a business in Exeter in England and uh, it wasn't too bad to go, we used to go backwards and forwards with the business. Um, it wasn't too bad to go occasionally up to Kent, Canterbury, to go to the dentist and people who live in England uh, we'll know what I'm talking about. It wasn't the end of the world. Well, it's a bit of a drive. Um, anyway, so I'm just constructing this this herb, these lovely orangey yellow flowers. Just drawing them in loosely. So that's the marigold. or Calendula officinalis. And then uh, the next one I'm going to do will be, um, what is this one? about this one, Arnica. We use Arnica a lot. Tamsin and I, we use um, herbal and homeopathic, especially homeopathic remedies all the time. Um, and uh, Arnica is very important to us for bruises and bumps when you hurt yourself, which we often do. Okay, so this is interesting to me to actually see what an arnica plant looks like. So we have the stem coming up here. And it's hailing. You can hear that. That's hail. It's March. These things happen. And little tiny flowers here, and little tiny closed up ones. It's very um, pleasant experience just to sit and just slowly draw something like this. And then we have here at the top, the Arnica has yellow flowers again, the same as the calendula. But on this particular example, that one is, all the petals are facing upwards. And then this one here has got the petals going like this. And then the center is very highly developed, like that, with dots. And then, so then we have perhaps a couple more leaves here. They're quite long, like that. So that's Arnica, Arnica Montana.
in Latin. Okay, and let's see. What else have we got here? Elder. Elder Sambucas Nigra. We could have some elder coming in from the side here. And elder flowers, of course, have like hundreds and thousands of tiny weeny flowers like that. I'm not going to draw every single one. But they have nice leaf shaped leaves which come out on in pairs. Oh, I forgot to finish what I was saying. I was given the idea of doing this, kind of drawing the herbs. And this isn't part of it, but um, drawing the herbs because the Dean of Canterbury Cathedral said, for Lent, why not keep a journal and each day note down something that you see or hear that you think is good. And I thought to myself, what I would do was to just do a painting, a very quick one of some herb or plant of some sort each day. So there is the elder, which is Sambucus nigra. Okay. And Next. Oh, we've got peppers here. Um, these here, that's number 11, that is bird's eye chilies. Um, let's have that coming down from the top as well. And they have leaves like that. And then little chilies, which will look nice in a painting because they're red. And there are lots of them. I will do a sketch of this if you want to have a go at this one. Um, but if you have this book, it's a great resource because you could trace it from the book directly if you can't draw. Or don't want to. And it would make a nice present for somebody who does cooking or who is interested in herbs. Once it's painted, it'll look nice. Um, OK, 
Okay, so let's see what next. We've got some um, nice things here, like uh, a lady's mantle. That's interesting. That has interesting shaped leaves. Like that, and then down here it's got smaller leaves are like that. And that's Alcamilla vulgaris, ladies, mantle, no, not that kind of mantle. And then we've got, how about some raspberries. We have some raspberries coming down here, perhaps. Raspberries. They're nice and pink, aren't they? So we can just draw those in, in pink. Our raspberries are just starting to grow in our garden. And um, let's have some dandelions or something like that. Oh, that's raspberries. Oh, I know what will look good. Um, some bit nice. of sage. Here we are. Sage. There are different kinds of sage. Some is very uh, gray, gray green. Some of it is more bright green. And I think some of it has rounded leaves, but this one has pointed ones. That's sage. And then I want to do some rosemary here. 
So we have a nice long rosemary and it has lots of little tiny and then other branches coming out with the same kind of spiky deal. I think we'll put lavender down here. Okay, so that's rosemary. And then I think I'm going to have to look up rosemary because I um lavender rather, I particularly want lavender and I don't know what page it's on. Lavender page sixty-seven. Not far away. Right, yes, that's right. Lavender is starting to grow in the garden too. There we are, lavender. Lavender, not lavender. And then maybe just because it's pretty, we could put a little sprig of bergamot here, so it has leaves like that. And then it has a flower turning back sepals like that, and then a thing in here like that, and then pink flowers coming up like that. And I think I'm going to start painting it now. So we filled the page up. Um, we could put another thing in there, I suppose. I could put uh, um, something small, perhaps. Uh, what about some... Um, Well, we could put some dandelion, couldn't we? Although we've got yellow there with the... No, okay, I'm gonna leave it for now and we're just going to start painting. So I'm going to grab a paintbrush. This is a nice round here and then I'm going to put my book out the way and exchange it for my paint, two paints. And I'm just wondering, I might want a smaller brush than that, actually. Maybe not that small. Looks 
So eight. Okay, so Calendula comes in more than one variety. There's an orange variety, apparently, and a yellow one. So we'll make this a kind of mixture. And I always keep my options open for um, after inking. You never know if you're going to want to ink or not. But I do believe in keeping things loose. in the stems first using a kind of bluish green and then the leaves and I'm going to use my messy palette a bit here for leaves because I firmly believe that you should change when you're painting leaves you can't uh, just pick a colour and then do them all the same colour. That doesn't work. So you have to change your green every couple of strokes. And that way you will get a much better, more natural looking plant. And even if you don't change it by much, even changing it by a little will make a difference. And then once you've put in um, the first layer of leaves, then you can come back with something in the way of shadow and veins.
right, um, so we'll leave that for the minute and now we'll do the lavender and lavender does have very greyish, very grey green or bluish probably more to the point. So we'll use some violet with the green to give us some, some grey green and we'll use violet because we're going to I need a bit more green in that. It's going to be great to be able to go to an art shop. There's, there used to be in Canterbury a really good traditional old-fashioned art shop and I'm using what am I using here quinacridone violet there used to be a lot of things and that's one of the things there used to be in the world but it's gone now but there is an art shop and I live in a place in the world where not only are there no dentists, but art shops are pretty thin on the ground too. So it's going to be a real treat. I don't suppose I'll buy very much. I could do with another tube of white gouache. the lady's mantle which was a nice light green actually really quite difficult to show you the colour mixing when I'm using a paint box like this. I don't know quite how to do it for the best because I'm using, um, I'll bring this up a bit perhaps. No, I can't get it all in. Anyway, I'm, I'm using a, a palette of greens here, which is just a slush of various different greens that I've kind of put together over the last couple of days and I'm just dipping into that. So it's just a mixture of blue and yellow really. It was indigo, quinacridone gold and uh, lemon yellow. Yeah, this is awkward. I'll have to figure out a better way of doing this. Okay, back to the ladies' mantle.
And then we want a little bit of brown. Um, this is brown for the roots. Let that dry a little bit before I come back in with um, the veins, I think. Let's put a bit of, uh, it's already dry this one. Okay, and then rosemary. Um, I wonder how I'm going to do that. Maybe I won't do that for a minute. Perhaps I will just, um, what color is that? Oh God. Okay, up here we've got the chili peppers and it's about time we painted something other than green. So I'm gonna pop the leaves in. And then we'll do the stems. A little bit more brown for these little things on the end. Stalks. And then oh, the excitement builds. We're going to take some orange, red, perhaps mixed with, I don't know where the quinacridone is, up here, is it? Yeah. There we are, little red chilies. I think there was meant to be one there as well. Okay, and in contrast, of course, raspberries are more this colour.
Rosemary is green, I do believe. So we'll just draw the stems in first. And then I don't think there's going to be much choice but to just literally practice your fine brush strokes. This is where you probably do need to hold the brush near to the end. And then having gone over it once, you will want to put some shadow bits in. Like that. And then we go back to the dark green just to drop in some shadows. There we are, there's that. bluish green so I'm mixing some cobalt blue a sort of cobalt blue into the regular green to make something sagey and where you want it darker you're going to add more blue Again, vary the greens. You can really, by painting something like this, you can practice mixing green. And you can see how fantastically varied greens can be. And you might have noticed I'm not using the book for my colours. I'm making them up as I go along because I know that if I try to co copy them from the book, I will lose my spontaneity, which is the whole thing is about spontaneity and patience. Having patience to develop a painting and not say, oh, I need to have this done can't be doing with this. If you're painting, you, you have to have, I think, you have to have patience. So there's the sage. Just trying to adjust my camera a little bit. Okie dokie. So now where are we? Um, let us put a nice yellowy green in this one. This was the uh, what was that called? A 
forgotten. But, but something began, began with a B, didn't it? I can't remember. Anyway, whatever it is, it had a nice pink. Um, so the pink would be... I'm going to use this, my little spotty thing, because I think this Pietra Rosa, yeah, will do for here. And then, yeah, Quinacridone Magenta for the top. That's rather sweet. I'll look their name up for that in a minute. And Arnica, Arnica, Arnica. That was yellow too, wasn't it? Yes, I remember now that was yellow as well. So we'll start off with a kind of greenish yellow. And then I'm going to put orange. in Was a little leaf. And then we had two little buds, some buddy things there. Yellow. And then down here we had a few little bits and pieces. And then I think it was obviously the roots are on the brown side, aren't they? We had the roots in here, didn't we? And then up here, finally, the last thing is Elder, which is a perfectly normal shade of green. So we can have some more fun trying to think of as many possible combinations. Of yellows and blues that we can come up with. want to make a green a little bit more subtle just add some violet something like quinacridone um what is it called quinacridone violet yes that's right uh one two three four one two three four so it's that one If you want to loosen up your painting, you need a big palette like this one. I'm going to get rid of that for the minute. I'm going to bring that in closer. This is just what they call a butcher's tray, but it's really just a white 
tray. And if you want to loosen up your painting, you cannot paint from a paint box like that Gallo one. You can't. You have to have more space to mix. That's what I firmly believe. I believe that because I've tried it. I've tried both and I know, for me anyway, and I'm not sure that I'm completely unique in the world, although of course sometimes you'd like to think so. Um, no, I don't think that at all. I think that everybody would be a better painter if they got themselves one of these white, big white trays. And you can use your paint box that you've got your paints in, but you need to... See, I've tried to do it today, and so I'm, I'm speaking from experience that I've actually demonstrated today. It's really, really, really difficult to paint freely um, unless you've got some space to mix things up in. Now, these... Um, elderflowers, I'm going to just do them using some dry brush techniques, some scumbling on the side of my brush, with a little bit of uh, periwinkle blue, just to indicate the shadows on those white flowers. And we'll just leave that like that. And there we are. That's the end of that. Oh, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. No, it isn't, because I'll tell you what I haven't done. I meant to come back to those raspberries. with some more pink to just add some shape to them. And you know, you could work on this a lot longer. I've spent quite long enough. I'm sure you're bored to tears. Oh, you're probably not even there anymore. But there we are. And when that's completely dry, I'll rub off some of the pencil lines, I will probably add another one up there. And um, so there we are. Or, or you could put the title up there if you wanted to use it as a as a, an indicator of um, the different herbs that you've been drawing. You could give it a title, in other words, like medicinal herbs or something like that. And you could definitely, obviously, come in with more detail using some sharper colours. But that doesn't look too bad. It's okay, and I hope you enjoyed that. And, um, yeah, I'll see you again soon. Bye for now, everybody. Mm -hmm.